are back out on the side of Highway 51 once again, and joining me today is Dr. Kristen Baum, and she is an associate professor for integrative biology here at Oklahoma State University. And you're doing some of your research with Dr. Martin in these uh, roadside kind of laboratory areas. Can you kind of tell us what you're doing? Sure, so we're, we're interested in mowing regimes and their effect on resources for monarchs and, and pollinators in general. Mm -hmm. So we've got some different treatment plots where we mow them at different times of the year, so in terms of when they're mowed and how often they're mowed. Right. And so the, the idea would be uh, we're working with ODOT to try to identify if there's ways we can shift the mowing regimes that would be beneficial to monarchs so we can uh, serve both the, the needs of ODOT in terms of providing a safe environment for motorists, but then also provide habitat for pollinators at the same time. And we've been talking a little bit about this all season long, and a lot of times there's a lot of emphasis on monarchs in the springtime, but now as we go into fall, you want to make sure that we're still talking about monarchs. Why is it so critical right now? So right now we're really interested in looking at uh, milkweed and milkweed regrowth in particular. So we have a good bit of milkweed at these particular sites in the spring, but then once the milkweed sets seed and the seed pods um, open up, then the plants tend to start to die back. And so they'll be back next year, but they're, they're gone as a resource for this year. But then if you mow, depending on the timing, the milkweed will regrow. Um, and be here for monarchs in the fall. So usually we think about monarchs migrating through Oklahoma in the spring, you know, laying eggs and then moving farther north and then just coming back through Oklahoma uh, during migration in the fall. But we actually have a lot of monarchs that are breeding in Oklahoma uh, starting in, I guess, about mid-August um, is usually when we start, start to see them. So um, they're not just flying through and needing nectar plants, they're actually laying eggs this time again. They're laying eggs and so, uh, and so we, we kind of refer to that generation as the fifth generation but it's and there's not much known about it uh, there hasn't been much research that's been done on this particular generation of monarchs but but we do have a lot in Oklahoma as well as as Texas and kind of the the southern region at this time of the year and they could contribute um, a lot to the to the population depending on um, you know how many there are and um, and how the population's doing that year. So, so again we don't have quite as much milkweed right now but there is a there's a good taproot on these so some of them push back up um, they regrew and we've got a couple of instars on here can you tell me about these instars and what level they are at and um, yes yeah, so we we still have milkweed usually in the fall um, if there's been um, some type of disturbance, so mowing. Um, and so this particular site was mowed in mid-July, uh, which is, is good timing thinking about other grasslands uh, species, like for example, birds that, that might nest out here as well. Um, and then also for, for the regrowth of the milkweed. So that mm -hmm. way it's got time to, to regrow um, and be here um, at, at this time. Um, of the year. And so we've got a, a small fourth instar here, so one that's made it through a couple instar stages. Um, and I think I we've got right there. Oh, and then we've got a little little first instar. And so right now we're seeing a lot of, of eggs and in, in early instars, uh, but then in a couple of weeks we'll start seeing more more late instars. And so the timing's pretty good for, for most of them to make so it through. So these will still make it. <laughs> yeah. good. So to, to make it through their life cycle and then join the peak migration. So so in the Stillwater, Oklahoma area, uh, peak migration is typically late September, early October. Um, and so this is this is good timing uh, for them to then be able to, to make it through their life cycle, emerge as an adult butterfly, and then head to Mexico. So they're going to head south instead of going north like yes. we would typically, typically expect. Okay, and so how do we know what, or what stage instar these are? So size itself isn't that great of a measure. They can, you know, depending on if they've just molted or which is, is shedding their skin. Uh, so we usually look at the length of the, the front and hind uh, tentacles. So we mm -hmm. can see we've got the projections at both ends. Um, and so that's kind of the best way to, to be able to, to figure out how old they are. So not only do they need food as caterpillars, they're still gonna need some nectar plants coming through in the fall. What are some great nectar plants that we have growing in the wild or a homeowner could have for them? 
So a lot of the, the asters, so in the daisy and the sunflower family, are, are excellent for, for monarchs. So you can think of um, solidago, which is goldenrod, um, liatris, which I think uh, the, the purple, so blazing star, mm -hmm. and, um, and things like that, or some of the, the really good ones. Salvia would be another one. And so that's another thing we're interested in for the, for the roadsides. There's not much blooming at the moment, but there are some plants that are in the vegetative stage that, that might be a good resource a little bit later in the year. And then the migration, even though it tends to be late September, early October, um, that can shift a little bit. So last year, our peak migration in, in Stillwater was October 10th and 11th, so mm -hmm. it was a little bit later. Okay. So some of the resources that we always think of as being really, really good were already past their prime. Um, and so then other things were more important. So, you know, so even having some things that, that bloom a little bit, bit later, uh, depending on, on the year, could be very helpful. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing your research with us, Dr. Baum. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.